Good day everyone. My name is Rutvik Shishagar. I work at Red Hat as a principal DSC. Today we are going to discuss how we should be handling CVs in OpenShift Content Platform 4 and some of the best practices. In the recent times, we have seen that cluster admins as well as security admins are struggling a lot while processing huge number of CVs. They often ask about how should we approach a scan report containing 100 plus CVs? How to deal with the false positives and real CVs? Sometimes they do see unresolved CVs lingering for a longer period of time. And how should we approach this kind of CVs? What are the timeline followed by Red Hat for fixing important critical CVs? Then many times their DevOps teams and peers are relatively new towards cloud ecosystem or OpenShift ecosystem. So they want to know how should their team remain on the same page while assessing security risk by following the right approaches as well as best practices shared by Red Hat. So solution to all these problems is, I would say we should have a structured approach to ensure that whatever CVs are there, those should be quickly triaged. Now let's break it down into a workflow. So this is an example of workflow wherein we can assess 100 plus CVs or more than that. As a cluster admin, once you received a scan report from any of the certified scanner or me, you may have a scanner of your own choice. First and foremost thing is to categorize those CVs in based on their severity. So once you have a scan report, you should be focusing on critical and important CVs. That way, focus would remain on high risk CVs with high CVS scores, particularly those affecting your business application and OpenShift core components. Once you prioritize high risk CVs, then you can move forward with medium or low severity. Once this prioritization is done, you could figure out what all patches are available. Let's say if you have any add-on operator installed via OLM and the CV patch is available for that particular operator, then you could simply move ahead and upgrade that operator via OLM upgrade strategies. Now let's say there is a CV patch available in Red Hat Core OS, then you would need to update the OpenShift cluster release to the next minor or major release as per the CV patch. Then you would be having some additional containerized apps that may need additional patches in the libraries or the base images you need to rebuild those containers so that CV patch would be done within your application. Now, as admin, I understood how should I be doing prioritization of the CVs, but what are the key steps to investigate CVs? Let's look into it. So we provide a CV checker dashboard wherein you can put multiple CVs for example, I have put this three CVs over here and I could clearly see the CV ID with the respective web page, the severity, published state, Puxilla, CVSS base score. This gives me a clarity what CVs I should be prioritizing first. This approach ideally helps when you, you have a Excel sheet, let's say, having hundreds of CVs and you have no place to uh, put those CVs for bulk assessment. Then you could simply copy paste the CV IDs in this particular checkbox and you get details for all those CVs. Now, as an admin, I should be focusing on critical and important CVs first. So I would look for the CVs individually to see the impact, what impact has been given in the description, how it affect my product or the component that I am using. So in the list of affected packages, you could drill down and see whether your product is really affected by this particular CV. That way we can understand the overall impact and exploitability, whether the affected component is really in use in our OpenShift cluster. We can verify the version as well. And once we confirm that CV is really affecting the OpenShift cluster in use, then we can see whether there is any security advisory made available by Red Hat. That security advisory basically would tell you where the CV patch has been delivered, what release you should be updating next. 
how should we manage red hat chorus cvs this is again one of the important aspect of how openshift 4 cluster admin should be looking at cvs earlier there was a challenge while rectifying cvs for red hat chorus as we used to see cvs pointing to rel 8 rel 9 streams only with the recent improvement in red hat cv data pages we can now see CVs assigned to Red Hat Core OS, what Core OS release has been affected. So that categorization is now available on the CV page. Let's take an example of this particular CV. And if you drill down the product filter for OpenShift Container Platform, you would see that this particular CV affect Red Hat Core OS of release 4.14 and there is a security data available as well. Now looking at the security errata, I would get to know that this particular CV fix has been made available in 4.14.21. Now you may have a question about CV patches and the timeline followed by Red Hat. Well, Red Hat does not have a fixed timeline for releasing CV patches. Therefore, they are released as soon as they become available. However, Red Hat is committed to supply secure software and also Red Hat provides timely analysis of CVs. In some situations, you may notice that OpenShift is taking some extra time to consume the CV fixes. That extra time is required for testing and compatibility checks to ensure that other interconnected systems doesn't break. The timeline mentioned over here can be just used for reference. Let's take a look at one of the important CVs and see how timelines are followed. This particular CV has been made public on January 14 and if you drill down the components and select any of the OpenShift release you will get to know the date when security errata has been made available. If we look at OpenShift 4.12 we get to know the release date for security errata was 13 February. This way we get to know how important CVs are prioritized as soon as the those are made public the CV fixes would appear within a couple of weeks as defined in the timelines now moving next let's discuss how to handle false positive CVs false positive CVs are important to address we need to make sure the process of rolling out false positive is being done in the right ways so what we need to do we need to verify the CV details through Red Hat CV Checker and check whether the CV is truly relevant to the OpenShift version in use. Then you also need to check the CV scanner because some security scanning tools and auditing tools make decision about CVs based on the version number of components they find. This often time results in false positive as some scanner tools do not really take into account the backported security fixes. While Red Hat is maintaining code stability for the enterprise grade software, Red Hat do not always fix the CV patches in the higher version of the software component. Red Hat often backport the security patches into previous or the stable releases. And this kind of CV fixes are not really detected in the security scanners. And hence, Red Hat recommends having a certified scanner to have more accurate results. A list of current certified vulnerability scanner is available at the Red Hat ecosystem catalog. Why should organizations have risk acceptance policy? It is important to know that CV impact may differ from user to user. It totally depends on the version of software being used. There might be additional network restrictions, strict RPAC rules due to which the CV may not pose the same level of risk to your setup and it is always recommended to perform regular patch management, implement security hardening, use strict RBAC for access control, apply network policies to limit communication between services. You can enable SE Linux SecCom profile for additional container level security and security training is something we need to ensure that our security team is trained on identifying and responding to CVs in OpenShift environment. Now, if we follow the right approaches and this structured way of triaging CVs, you could see that when a full report of CVs containing 100 plus flaws would be drilled down 
or narrowed down to the real CVs and you could save your bandwidth and time while dealing with the CVs that really affect your OpenShift cluster. As a conclusion, we understood that assessing risk is more than just counting CVs. Handling CVs in OpenShift is a proactive and ongoing process. It's important we understand how Red Hat assigns severity levels of CVs. This is important, especially when you have a non-certified scanner. It tends to report CV severities based on what it sees on additional CV databases other than Red Hat CV database. Then some vulnerability scanner only use NVD CV database rating, resulting more false positives and duplicate results. Regular monitoring, patching, and validation are crucial for maintaining security posture. You could utilize these resources to get trained on the security methods and assessment that are followed by Red Hat. This way you can minimize the efforts and reduce this time while assessing the CVs in huge numbers. Thank you.